I've been doing resumes for a really long time. There's not a lot of difference in how people do resumes. So it might be like, oh, the trend is put an objective. Oh, now the trend is don't put an objective. What I talk to students about is anyone can take everything they've ever done and put it on paper. That's not hard, right? Anyone can do that. The skill that comes along with resume writing is being able to look at all of the information, pare it down to what's really important, and be able to clearly and concisely summarize. That's a skill that can be used across a lot of areas, but you can apply it to the resume too. Resumes should be targeted. Don't send a generic resume out. What I would say is what I talked about earlier with our process with students and how we have a career development model. The first step is that strategy I talked about. The last step is your resume and cover letter and your communication. And the reason for that is if you don't know what you want to do and you don't know what your value proposition is, how are you going to write something (laughs) that reflects that? Resumes are tactical. They help people feel like they got something done. People don't know what else to do, so they go to the resume first. If we have students who come in and they've never met with us and they want a resume review, we pull them back. And the first question we talk about is their strategy and their focus and what they're looking for. We want to help students really understand that career management process before they can focus on the tactical stuff. It's not different advice than people have always given, which is make your resume neat easy to read, targeted. The format is important to have it just be really simple and clear. What I usually tell students is the format of your resume should not take away from the content because the content is the important part of that. We hear a lot of things in the media about recruiters and how much time they spend on a resume. The one I usually quote is six seconds or less. In six seconds, what have you put on your resume that's going to get someone's attention that will put your resume into the pile that it will be reviewed more closely? With students, one thing I always try to caution them about is trying too hard to tailor their resume to ATS systems. There's importance in understanding how those systems work. There are lots of programs that'll tell you like specific companies and they use this ATS system and this is how it works. With students, what I find is if they focus too much on that, their resume ends up sounding very disjointed and it's harder to understand. It's good to understand how it works, but um, trying to sort of game the system ends up making your resume not as easy to understand and doesn't really highlight the things the way you want it to. You had just spoken about resume writing. What are your thoughts as well about things like LinkedIn and social media advice for students? I love LinkedIn. Um, Huge fan of that if people use it well. We talk about LinkedIn as part of their personal brand, part of those marketing materials. So I think one of the key things to think about with LinkedIn is to be intentional with what's on there. I don't know that people are always intentional. They go on, they follow a bunch of companies and channels and people throw a bunch of skills on there, kind of haphazardly just put everything on there, sort of like the resume, right? It's not curated. So really thinking about being intentional in what you want people to know you for. When I talk about LinkedIn with students, I say you have a brand, whether you know it or want it or not. So why not be the person in charge of that? With LinkedIn, you can shape the way people think about you or what people know you for by following specific companies, liking or posting specific articles or updates, start following supply chain channels and reading articles and sharing those out over time. When people see your name attached to that specific topic, they start to recognize you associated with that. If you share 
an article about supply chain and then you share an article about higher ed and then you share an article about baseball, people don't know what to do with that. They don't know what to think. There doesn't seem to be any focus. And so again, back to the strategy and what you're trying to accomplish and what you want people to know you for, those are the things then that you can put out there. And LinkedIn's obviously changed a lot over time in things that you can do on there. You can shift your skills around now so that you can highlight which ones show up on your homepage. I think the social media, the same things apply that have always applied. If you're in the job search and you're wanting to be seen a certain way, you want to make sure your social media reflects that in your professionalism and the things that you're posting or commenting on. Anytime you put yourself out there, you want to be intentional again about how you want people to perceive what you're putting out there. And I think LinkedIn, what I like about it is I used to tell students, it's more like a 3D version of your resume. So you can have multimedia on there. The resume is just a one dimensional piece of paper, whereas LinkedIn is this dynamic live vision of who you are and your values and what you believe in and what you want 